Psalms 124, verse number 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick. Then their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would touch our hearts today with your word. Your spirit would do a great work as we ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to rest upon it us this morning in Jesus name. And we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I can picture the processional party that takes place passing through the pleasant countryside. I can picture them coming from all different walks of life. Uh, some are common shepherds who have toiled uh, throughout the year under the brisk blank, uh, blanket of the night air, uh, guiding their sheep and uh, tending to the disobedient sheep. Others were farmers who had plowed and planted uh, the hard, harsh ground uh, that was stubborn to yield food. Uh, some of these that were in this procession were merchants uh, who had traveled all year uh, buying, bartering. They were trading, uh, bringing home bounty to put bread on their table for their families from different homes and different circumstances, from a different economic and social levels, from a different sizes of homes, from a different educational and, and professional achievements, uh, from the east and the west, the north, the south. Amen. These pilgrims would make their way to Jerusalem uh, for their annual feast. Hallelujah. They came for one purpose, and that was to worship God at Jerusalem. The Bible the Bible labels this particular psalm as a song of degrees in some versions, and in others it's labeled a song of ascent. Uh, when we look at this part of this psalm or this particular psalm, and we look at it in the uh, context of these other psalms, there is a, a group of them put together that these Israelites would begin to sing on their way in their pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Amen. It is part of a group from Psalms 120 to Psalms 134 that was sung by these Israelites as they journeyed to these spaces. Special feast. Now, I'm going to use my imagination this morning, but I see them packing up everything and making the long trek towards Jerusalem. Uh, when the load was heavy and the road was stony, I can almost hear one of these Israelites breaking out in a song and singing Psalms chapter 121. He would sing, I will lift up my hill, eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. When the sun would be blazing and the ground would be burning underneath their feet, I can hear a voice begin to sing in Psalms 121 and verse 5. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Hallelujah. Oh yes, when the murmuring and the complaining would begin, I can almost hear some sing from Psalms 133 and verse 1. Behold how pleasant, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. The Psalms would carry them on their journey to Jerusalem. There's times when we've traveled. My daughter loves to sing and she would break out in a song. Usually it was a good indication she was sleepy. She always usually sings before she goes to sleep. 
Amen. And on long trips, it would not be uncommon to hear somebody break out in a song. Now we've replaced it with CDs and we've got music now to entertain us. Could I tell you that the Israelites, amen, they'd break out in a song. They didn't have alkaline batteries back then. Didn't have such a thing as MP3 players. Didn't have CD players. Amen. All they had with their voices. And they'd break out in a song on their journey. Amen. To worship God at Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. But in the midst of the singing, I can hear someone else open up and begin singing Psalms 124. Amen. The question I have today is this. Why, in the midst of so much joy and gladness, after all, it was a great trip to make. Everybody looked forward to it. It was a trip that brought great anticipation. It was like going on a vacation, but it was for a greater purpose, and that was to worship God in Jerusalem. And why, in the middle of all the joy and the gladness, would they sing such a song as Psalm 124? Why, when they were headed up to the temple of God to worship Him and to lift up holy hands? Why is it when they get a chance to see their family and friends who they've not seen for a long time? Why remember the bad stuff in situations like this? Why break up all those bad, or bring back rather all those bad memories of trials and tribulations? Amen. Why sing about hardships and heartaches? Why even go there? Amen. You must understand today, church, the text here does not say that man would not rise up against us. The text does not say that the waters would not try to overwhelm us and drown us. There's nothing pleasant about enemies attempting to swallow you alive. There's nothing pleasant about rushing waters that are fixing to overtake your soul. There's nothing nice about being surrounded by enemies on every side. My question then is why even bother to remember these experiences in such a wonderful atmosphere and a wonderful planned trip such as this was. You see, in life it is natural to memorialize those things which are pleasant. Oh yes, we keep photo albums of birthday parties, amen, of uh, uh, high school graduations, uh, amen, when folks come over to the house, uh, we show them uh, the uh, photos of accomplishments uh, throughout life, uh, amen, we memorialize the good times, uh, but I've yet to see a young lady say, hey, pastor, take a look at this photo, uh, this is when that boyfriend broke my heart, uh, I've yet for somebody to say, let me grab my video camera and go and take a photo, uh, a video of my family in their state of hunger because we've got no food on the shelf. I have yet for somebody to say, hey, this is the photograph of my wife and I when we totaled our car and uh, and everything we had was lost in a fire. Hey, Amen. It just doesn't happen. So why during this time when it was supposed to be joy and a time of gladness would they bring up the past of heartache and sorrow? Have you ever wondered about that? Hey, Amen. Why? Why? Why remember the times when doubt and depression come in like a flood? Why bring up the times, amen, when you remember how you were ostracized and sometimes criticized and sometimes uh, chastised for no good reason? Why bring up the times when the bills were too high and the money was too low? Why would you want to sing about the times when you felt hopeless and you felt helpless and you felt like there was no care at all to be found? I want you to know, church, today that any recollection of our history that includes only the good things is an incomplete history. It's an incomplete history. If you only remember the times when you had peace at home and peace on the job and peace at school, if only the times you remember are the times when the money was good and the bills were paid on time, amen, and everything was working fine. If all you remember is the times when you felt happy and healthy and holy, you're missing part of the equation of life itself. You see, the text here today shows us that everybody at some 
point in their life, amen, is going to go through some trouble. It's a guarantee. If trouble hasn't come to your life, amen, just hold on, amen, and continue to live. Because as sure as I'm a standing here and as sure as you're a sitting there, trouble will come to your life in various forms and in various fashion. Oh, yes, it will. Amen. Most of us, if not all of us, can testify that even already throughout this year, there has been great times, wonderful times, but there's also been some bad times. There's also been some low times. There's also been some valley times. There's also been some lonely times. There's also been some times of depression. There's also been some times of discouragement. Some of us know how it is to feel the loneliness and the depression. Amen. That thought that nobody understands what we're going through. Only God and the pillow that we lay our head on is able to hear, amen, and identify with our souls that which we've kept inside. Maybe somebody has betrayed you this year. Somebody that you've trusted. Maybe somebody that said they guard your back only to stab you in the back. Amen. You've told your secrets only later to learn they've been broadcasted better than CNN. Oh yes, this year some of us, amen, some of you have had the heartache of unemployment. Amen. You've worked hard for the company, but instead of getting a raise, you got the pink slip, Sister Ruth. Amen. For some of you, the death of a loved one. Oh yes, Sister Wyrick. Amen. The raging waters that have cascaded over your soul. Amen. For some of you, I don't know even as a pastor what some of you have gone through this year. Amen. Many of you I do, but some of you have hit it well. Some of you I don't realize what you faced already this year. Amen. They may be that child in the home. Amen. That has been almost unbearable. It may be an under, a misunderstood parent or a parent that just does not want to listen. Amen. Seems like the raging waters are trying to wash you away. I don't know what burden that you've had to bear. I don't know the sorrow that might have been yours. I don't know how many sleepless nights that some of you've had. I don't know how many times you've had to borrow from one credit card to pay another. But I do know this, that after all the trouble in our world, in our community, and in our neighborhood this year, after what's gone on in our church, in our lives, and in our families, the reason we are still here today is because the Lord is on our side. I feel like preaching to you this morning that the Lord is on our side. Had it not been for the Lord, I don't know where I'd be. Amen. I'm not asking you to dwell on your troubles. I'm not saying you ought to drag up the details. I'm not telling you that you, that you ought to just uh, lament over all the, the past problems that you've ever had. But if we forget... What we have gone through. Amen. We forget that God has been the one to bring us through. Holy, holy, holy. If we forget all the troubles and trials, then we forget the great victory that God brings through Jesus Christ, His Son. Amen. I want you to understand this morning, and here's my first point. If we, as we look back, amen, we must understand that when things were at their worst, God was at His best. Amen. When things were at their worst, God was at His best. When we came to the Red Sea of our experience, we saw the pave maker make a, make a travel way throughout that crossing. When we got to the fiery furnace experience, we found out that our very protection came from the Lord. Our souls were flame retardant because of Him. Amen. When we lose our jobs, He recognizes that He can stretch the food and the money. Amen. God shows up and He shows off in our time of trouble. That's when God does His best when we're at our worst. Amen. This year, the times that we've seen God most are the times when we've been down. The times when God's come through and He's been most evident and He's been most prominent is the times when we've been in our troubles. Woo! Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. Amen. The times when we were friendless and He stuck closer than a brother. The times when our heart was broken and He put it back together again. The times when we didn't know where to turn and He led us by His divine Holy Spirit. I thank God today that in verse 6 it says, and we can say like David and the Israelites. In fact, I lift up my voice this morning and I say along with them, Amen. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. It could be a lot worse. God could have turned us over. God could have given up on us. Amen. It could be a lot worse than what it's been. But thanks be to God, if it had not been for the Lord, it had been a lot worse. The devil could have taken all we had. Amen. All our hopes and dreams could have been gone. But God didn't give up on us. Amen. Some of you have read the books, the novels. My wife reads uh, some novels. She has some series of uh, back in uh, specifically the Civil War era. They're just Christian fiction books. Amen. I can't even remember the author right now. Uh, Morris, I believe. But uh, while driving school bus uh, and a, a little time that I have between routes, I took one of them books with me. Amen. Just grabbed it and, and, and took it and began to read it. And, and I, I like history when it deals with civil war. Even though it's a fiction book, it tries to bring as much reality of what took place as possible. And the, the story is unfolded about a young man who had his leg amputated because of a bullet that took him above the knee. And he became very bitter over the fact that he laid in his bed day in and day out. And after several months of in this predicament, amen, finally, uh, there was a young boy, 15 years of age, that had also been fighting for the South. And that boy was in the hospital dying of a gut wound. And he asked for his friend Lowell to come and give him, uh, to say goodbye to him. He knew he was going. And finally, when they persuaded Lowell to make the trip into Richmond, amen, to go to that hospital. Oh, yeah, it almost sounds real, don't it? Amen. When they finally persuaded him to get there, amen, as he passed that hall, there were soldiers wounded who stood and some sat and some lay and said, Lowell, is that you, buddy? Oh, it's good to see you. One man had no eyes. One man had no arms. Amen. And as Lowell got to the bedside of that 15-year-old boy, amen, that boy looked up at him and said, Lowell, is that you? I'm glad you came. He said, I've held on long as I can, and I can't make it much more. Lowell, I've come to know Jesus. Do you know Him, Lowell? And Lowell broke down and cried. And after a few minutes, he noticed a crimson stain begin to stain that sheet. And he pulled the sheet back and saw that his wound had reopened and an artery was bleeding. He yelled for the nurse. She came in. Amen. He said, "What? we need help. And she said, put your finger on the artery. And he did. And it stopped the blood flow for about two Two hours, that boy, amen, was between life and death. We're talking, folks, about Civil War era. There was no surgeons available. There wasn't the techniques we have today. Amen. And finally, in that space of two hours, that man, Lowell, who was so bitter, saw that there was others in a worse state than he and accepted Christ into his heart and got gloriously saved. I know it's just a work of fiction, but God does things just like that. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord, we'd be a whole lot worse than what we are. Uh, hallelujah. When we look at verse 7, we see something very interesting here. It says, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Amen. Church, we are all at times portrayed as a wayward bird that sees some bait and reaches out for it. Maybe you're here this morning and you've strayed from God's graces and you've been like that bird that saw a trap and didn't recognize it as such. All you saw was bait and you took it and become trapped by the enemy. Amen. Oh, yes. You know how you feel. Amen. When you've been caught by the enemy. 
you, you hit yourself on the head and say, I wish I'd have never done that. I wish I'd have been more alert. Amen. You may have in January made a resolution to say, I won't do this. God's convicted me of it. And come May, you find yourself right back to it. Amen. You may have said in January, I'm going to read my Bible and pray more this year. And come August, you've slipped up and haven't opened your Word for some time except in the services. Oh, yes, you may have said back in January, I'm going to make a resolution. I'm going to do more for God. I'm going to spend more time with Him. And you find yourself back at the television spending more time there than you do in prayer. But could I tell you there is a snare that is out there, amen, for the Christian, amen, and if we will not, if we're not careful, we will fall to the snare of the enemy, amen, but I'm glad to tell you this, that even though we fall, Micah chapter 7 verse 8 says, rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Amen. The reason we can arise is because God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? And the reason we can get back up is because we serve a merciful God. And if we have sinned, there is an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who will forgive us and set us free and give us hope again in this hopeless world. I'm glad to tell you today that even though we may be down, we can get back up. Even though we may have failed, we can, we can still survive. Even though we may have messed up, God doesn't leave us in our mess. Amen. He came and delivered us. He came and set us free. He came to release us from the chains of guilt and to take away the penalty and gives us liberty. My second point this morning is when we look back over this year, we realize that we've not been perfect, but we've had a God, and we've got a God who never leaves us nor forsakes us. Amen. God has never thrown in the towel on anybody's life. <laughs> Cindy may have prayed, and Bill may have prayed, and the church may have prayed a long time for Jeremy to get saved. Amen. Amen. God never threw in the towel, even when discouragement would come at times. And some of your loved ones that have gotten saved, you ever wondered if the Lord was ever going to deal with their hearts. But God never gave up. God never gave up. Amen. I'm so glad He's lifted us out of our miry clay of mistakes and set us free. Amen. Some of you need to tell that bait layer this morning, the enemy of our souls, old devil, the old slewfoot, you need to tell him that God has set us free by His precious blood and whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. Verse 8 gives us a great resolution. Amen. When you're looking back, never forget to look up. When you're looking forward, never forget to look up. It says, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. <laughs> you know, church, sometimes we face, and, and in fact, all the time, we really face the unknown. Amen. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You think you know and you hope you know and you plan to know, but you really don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. A box truck, a box truck like Brother Matt Cooney drives uh, I was a, a fish tailing beside my bus on that Thursday rainy morning. And I'm sure that man never intended to almost upset that truck on its side as he was trying to come to a dead stop. Amen. Because of traffic. Amen. Sometimes you just don't know. I'm sure Phyllis never intended. Amen. To go into the hospital and face gallbladder surgery. Amen. Tomorrow morning the phone could ring and you could get some news. Amen. Of a great loss or a tragic that has taken place of some tragedy. Oh yes, we don't know about tomorrow, but we do know who holds tomorrow. Amen. Ellen White writes and says, we have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way that the Lord has led us and His teaching in our past history. The only problem we have is when we forget where our help came from. Our help didn't come from where we live. It doesn't come from what we drive. 
Our help doesn't come from the schools we went to. Our help doesn't come from the fact that we're Republican or Democrat. Our help doesn't come from the bottle or some pill. Our help does not come from a man or a woman. Our help does not come from who or what we know. Our help comes from the Lord. Amen. We've made it this far this year because He's taken us through our troubles. We've made it this far this year because when the going got tough, God got tougher. Amen. We've made it thus far this year because for every rushing water in our lives, God has made a bridge over troubled waters. Amen. We've made it thus far this year because for every heartache... God has fixed the broken heart. We've made it thus far because when we've fallen, He's picked us up. Amen. Every time we were knocked down, He's helped us to get back up again. Every time we failed, He's covered us with His victory. Every time, amen, that we have come to a crossroads and didn't know which way to turn, He has been there. He's been there for us. If it had not been for the Lord, amen, we've made it this far, but but what about tomorrow, Pastor? Amen, it's like walking into a dark alley, knowing there's trouble lurking. None of us want to do that. Not even a flashlight to aid us and feel like we're vulnerable to every secret of that alley. Amen. I want you to understand, you need to know, That if something happens to you, you have help. Amen. Some may trust in horses and chariots. Some may trust in stocks and bonds. Some may trust in clothes and fashions. But our help comes from the Lord. Some may believe in their family and friends. Some may believe in their favorite superstar. Some may look to preachers and pastors, but our help comes from the Lord. Some may look to their fancy houses. Others look to their fine cars. Some look to the clothes that they are wearing, but our help comes from the Lord. Our help, our help, the songwriter said, our help comes from the Lord. Oh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me. Where would I be? Oh, where would I be? (laughs) Hallelujah. Oh, yes. If it had not been, amen, for the Lord on my side, tell me this morning, where would I be? Ask yourself, where would I be? The verse says, He kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Well, He rocked me in the cradle of His arms when He knew I'd been battered and scarred. Oh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, oh, tell me where would I be? Oh, where would I be? He kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. Oh, He rocked me in the cradle of His arms when He knew I'd been battered and scarred. If it had not been, For the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Oh, hallelujah. Where would I be? Well, He's never, He's never left me alone. He gave me joy and such peace I've never known. Oh, He answers when I get down to pray. And with victory, He showed me the way. Tell me where would, if it had not been for the Lord, 
on my side. Tell me where would I be? Hallelujah. Oh, where would I be? Well, he's never left me all alone. He gave me a joy and such peace I've never known. He answers when I get down to pray. And with victory, he showed me the way. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Some of you wouldn't even be here this morning if it had not been. For the Lord on my side, hallelujah, tell me where would I be, thank God, where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side, oh tell me where would I be? Oh, where would I be? Well, He kept my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. I love this part. Well, He rocked me in the cradle of His arms when He knew I'd been battled and scarred. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Hallelujah. Where would I be? Oh, had it not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be, hallelujah, where would I be, oh, had it not, had it not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be, hallelujah, where would I sing at church, had it not had it not been for the Lord on my side, tell me, tell me where, where would I be? Hallelujah. Where would I be? Had it not, not been for the Lord on your side, tell me where. Can you tell me, where would you be this morning if it had not been for the Lord? Where would it be this morning if it had not been for Jesus? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, oh, tell me where would I be? I feel this morning like somebody, somebody's needed to hear this message. Somebody here needed to know that God is still on your side. Somebody this morning just needed to hear the preacher say one more time from God's holy word, if it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? I think somebody here this morning just needed a little reassurance that everything's going to be all right. That's not saying that the burden will be lifted necessarily or the weight gone. But it is saying this, when I'm at my worst, God is at His best. When I'm at my worst, God is at His best. When I'm at my lowest, God reaches down. I believe He pays special attention, amen, even as He does the sparrow that falls. How much more does He love us? Oh, where would I be? Hallelujah. If we could all stand this morning. If you need special prayer, I want you to come. If you're not saved and you need the Lord, you need to come. 
If you're carrying a weight as a Christian, you need to come. If you need the church to pray with you, you need to come. If you need a little encouragement this morning, why don't you come? Oh, if it had not been for the Lord, we may not be able to do a whole lot as a family. But God can do so much more than we could ever think of or comprehend. Let's have some ladies come, if you will. Oh, for the Lord on my side. Hallelujah, tell me where would I be? Oh, my God. Where would I be? You feel your need to pray? Come on. You need special attention this morning. You need special help. Come on. Amen. The Lord's here to help you. Oh, let's sing a psalm. Let's sing a Psalm 124 together. Let's lift our voices to God in prayer and in singing unto Him. Oh, God, if it had not been, I'd be so lost without you. If it had not been for your keeping power, I'd be in a terrible mess. If it had not been for you, Lord, I'd have been dead a long time ago. Oh, my family would have been ripped up and destroyed. Had it not been for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the Lord on my side. Tell me where would I be? Oh, yes. Where?